Executives from General Motors sat down with the union representing over 2,000 Oshawa plant workers today in Detroit. Unifor has been fighting to keep the plant alive, but in an open letter to Unifor, General Motors has turned down the union's proposals. They write, Unfortunately, all Unifor's proposals would involve substantial incremental costs and a further deterioration of GM's competitive position. Having completed an analysis of Unifor's proposals, GM has determined that it cannot pursue them because they would not combat the declining economic and market factors that must be addressed. GM added that it hopes to work closely with Unifor on transitioning the closure of the plant. So is it game over for Unifor and the, Unifor and the plant? Jerry Dias is the national president of Unifor. He joins us from Windsor. Let's start right there, Mr. Dias. What do you make of that statement and, and is this the end of the road? No, it's not the end of the road because General Motors cannot exit Oshawa because of the impact that it's going to have on the Ontario economy, but also the impact that it's going to have on the future and other automakers who currently exist in Canada. Look, if General Motors can walk away from Oshawa and our government say absolutely nothing, then the other automotors, automotive makers will feel emboldened to make the same decisions. Our governments need to have a spine. They need to step up. Uh, yeah, at your, at your news conference, you said you were, quote, disgusted by the silence of the federal and Ontario governments. What do you mean by silence? I mean, they, they did express their dismay, but they, they, especially the Ontario government, seemed to have talked to GM and understood that it was a sort of fait accompli, the, the, and, but said they were open to helping in any way. Look, the government spoke to the president of GM in Canada. He has about as much power within the corporate boardroom as the person that does the landscaping at the Renaissance Centre in Detroit. The facts are is that they need to summons Mary Barra. Mary Barra is the CEO of General Motors. The Prime Minister or the Premier need to get her in a room and say that this is completely unacceptable. Governments have a way of getting people's attention if they have the backbone to do it. But frankly, they have said nothing. Over the, over the whole holiday shutdown, we were in the media, we spent a lot of time, you know, advertising while they were all singing Christmas carols. This is a big deal. This is going to impact thousands and thousands and thousands of Canadians. This is going to take billions of dollars out of government coffers. This is going to affect our communities. This is going to affect our kids' education, hospitals. Listen, this is a big deal. So people need to understand the importance of this and join with us to fight back. I don't view this as inevitable. Canadian consumers don't view it as inevitable, and Canadian consumers are pushing back. You met, I remember you met with the Prime Minister shortly after the announcement was initially made. Have you spoken to him since? Have you delivered the message you're, you're talking about right now to him again? No, listen, I'm, I'm speaking to the Prime Minister directly right now. Look, we need your help. You need to step in. Uh, the governments can make, get General Motors' attention by sitting on their hands certainly isn't the way of doing it. So governments have acted in the past. I think about years ago when, they, when the Japanese companies had no footprint here and they were flooding the North American and Canadian market. The Canadian government stopped all the cars that were coming off the ship. They were inspecting. They were holding things up to get the Japanese company's attention. And of course, now we have Honda and Toyota here in Canada. There's things that can be done, but silence isn't the way of being successful. What do you want them to do? I, I understand what you're saying. Call Mary Barra, the CEO of GM, to the table and talk to her. But should they be committing, you know, money to this? Should they, what specifically are you looking for? They don't need to commit money. The reality is, is when GM says that them investing money in us would make them uncompetitive, it's complete nonsense. General Motors made six billion dollars in the first nine months of 2018. Six billion. This is the best market in the history of the auto industry. So if General Motors will close Oshawa after a hundred years, when the market is the best, the profitability is the best, then what should we expect when, during a market decline? So the governments need to stand up and fight. This is Canada's number one export industry. It's over $80 billion a year. Are we just going to allow the industry to walk away and the government say, oh well, oh well, we can't do a thing about it? Listen. When workers' backs are against the walls, they want government to stand up and fight with them. Our governments are failing miserably as we stand here today, and they better get with the program. We have David Patterson on later on the show, an executive with GM Canada. He, in the past, I've watched other interviews with him after this announcement, he insisted it didn't mean that other plants would close or that other workers would be out of work, that this, this was sort of it. What's your response to that? General Motors is the most disingenuous company in the country. 
Uh, we were in bargaining with them in 2008. We signed a collective agreement. Within days, they announced the closure of our truck plant. In uh, 2012 bargaining, we heard about the Camaro leaving. They said, no, no, no problem. Six months after we signed the agreement, they moved the Camaro. In 2016 bargaining, they said they would not close any of our plants during the life of the agreement, and they've now announced the closure in Oshawa. David Patterson will have a job at the end of the day, but thousands and thousands of Canadians won't. So it's pretty just and disingenuous for him to say, oh, trust us, we're fine. The, the Equinox, which we build in Ingersoll, is now being built in two assembly plants in Mexico. So if there's a decline in the Equinox, will they continue to pay our members $30 an hour, or will they continue to pay their Mexican employees $2 an hour? I'll let you make that decision. So I don't trust General Motors one iota by their history and by what they've done to Canadians. So do I trust David Patterson? Uh, no. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Mr. Dias. Thank you. Is there anything that can be done to save the plant? David Patterson is Vice President, Corporate and Environmental Affairs for General Motors Canada, and he joins us now from Toronto. Hi, Mr. Patterson. Thanks for being I, with us. I really appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh, you heard Mr. Dias, I'm sure, say, the head, who is the head of the union representing workers at the Oshawa plant, that your company told him in the meeting today keeping the Oshawa plant open would not affect GM's bottom line. Is that true? Well, I wasn't in the meeting myself. I had a good debriefing on the meeting. It went a lot longer than originally planned. Uh, we spent a lot more time uh, than probably expected talking about some of the opportunities that we see to really help the workers there to make transition into other jobs and to provide some extremely generous benefits to help that to happen. But yes, today we had to come back after our meetings in December. We reviewed a variety of proposals that Unifor put forward. Unfortunately, all of those proposals only added costs and uh, made the economic uh, situation that we're facing more difficult. And keep in mind that our situation in Oshawa is one plant out of eight around the world that are being affected, four in the United States. Um, and so it's a very difficult transition. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't see anything that uh, really changes the economics. So we said, let's focus on helping our people. I just want to be clear, though, on the economics, on the economic situation, because what Mr. Dias is saying is that in the meeting, he was told that closing this plant won't actually help GM's bottom line. Is that the case? Uh, no, the, the, the whole point of this uh, overall exercise is to be able to uh, reduce the, uh, the cost inefficiency that comes from running plants below capacity. In other words, we have too many plants for the amount of demand. We've also seen a massive shift in the North American marketplace away from cars to buying uh, SUVs and crossovers. And we make large cars in the Oshawa plant. We also have a temporary pickup truck program in there. So unfortunately, those products have been canceled, the market has changed, and we've been running the Oshawa plant at under 30% capacity. That's the problem. And so the uh, suggestions of moving other products in there, uh, we respectfully looked at them, we studied them, but they didn't change the economics of the situation. And so what we spent today also talking about was what could we do to be able to help the uh, workers there with very, very generous uh, packages that would help them to make the transition to some 5,000 jobs that have been identified to us by over 20 employers in the GTA area that would like to employ all of those Oshawa workers. Has the company, have you or anyone at GM talked to a representative from the federal government, a minister for example, since the initial announcement was made? Yeah, I've talked to them many times. And the, the federal government and the policies of the federal government have absolutely nothing to do with the decision that has been made at Oshawa. It's purely a reaction to the market, the fact that we have too many plants for the demand that is available. We need to rationalize that number of plants, and we need to be able to reallocate money into new technologies for the future. So we're, for example, hiring a thousand workers in Markham that are doing software and uh, all kinds of advanced technology for new electric and other types of cars of the future. So we're hiring in Canada and growing in Canada in some areas and unfortunately the Oshawa plant, which is one of three plants that we have in Canada, has been affected because it's been uh, at 30 percent capacity and it's been caught in between with uh, the wrong products at the wrong time. And so unfortunately, uh, we have been part of that series of eight plants that have been affected. Is there anything the federal government uh, could say, could do, any money it could offer that would keep that plant open? 
Well, the, again, it, the issue is not to do with, uh, with federal policy or money. I mean, we have been the so beneficiaries no. of great support. So, no, we haven't asked for anything. Uh, what we've, in fact, offered to do is to, to uh, be able to do something important. So, for example, we have half the workers out of the 2,600 workers in the plant that are, are going to be eligible for General Motors pensions. And in addition, they will have a buyout of somewhere between fifty and $60,000. In addition, they'll get a new car. And in addition, they will have all their training paid for if they find a job in the 5,000 that have been identified that suits them. And so we think that is a good starting position and I think compared to any other company, a very generous position in terms of how to help workers to transition to available new jobs because we just can't be able, to, we can't resolve the economic issue that is there um, uh, in the transformation that we're going through. What about the concern that this is just the beginning of something more? I know in the, I've heard you in past interviews insist that that's not the case. You talk about the thousand workers that you're going to hire in Markham and the sort of evolution of the company and the future of it in Canada. But the union says, you know, that, that GM has been disingenuous in the past. For example, in 2012, the company said there was no problem with the Camaro. Then it was moved. Why should Canadians believe you this time? Well, look, product programs move all the time, all over uh, between different plants. Um, but that has a invested, big impact, obviously, here. Well, what also had a big impact is that we've invested billions of dollars, I think about $3.5 billion, in new product programs in Oshawa. We've built uh, $800 million in our CAMI facility in Ingersoll, hundreds of millions in our St. Catharines. Uh, tens of millions in terms of our engineering and software. So we're not going anywhere. We have 32,000 employees in GM dealerships coast to coast. With respect, we're though, we're actually I mean, growing in various areas. And so, with respect, though, Canadians invested billions of dollars in your company as well, and now they're reading the news of this plant closure and well, they, people who will be yeah. out of work. Well, they did, and and it's a really good point because I was there in 2009 and part of that that transformation which buttressed the entire economy of southern America of southern Ontario but what it did something else important as well and we put four billion dollars of that money into the hourly worker pension fund which is now funded over a hundred percent and so all those workers that are rel eligible to retire in Oshawa which is half of them uh, will be able to benefit from a General Motors pension a hundred percent funded pension plus very generous additional benefits the idea is for us to be able to get them into opportunities that are there ahead where they can plan with their families for new careers. And we want to do that now because we have a year ahead of us of production. And we want those employees to have the opportunity to learn about those jobs, to find out what training they can have, and we, we will be judged by how we can take care of that transformation for them. All right. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Appreciate your time today. Thank you.